this is simple bot making with round one, and I'm round one. Um, so uh, this is one of my favorite topics uh, in computing, actually. And when I <coughs> when I say bot, I'm talking about a program that plays a video game for in in place of a person, usually with the intent of cheating, right? And uh, yeah, I like to sort of like just dig in around and try to make some. And I'm here to sh uh, show you a few techniques you can use yourself to get started as well. Uh, but before I uh, continue, there's some disclaimer I need to give you. Uh, first off, this is for fun and educational purposes. Uh, I don't advocate cheating, but uh, it's a good way to learn about both the high level and low level aspects of computing. But I do have to admit, the charm in making a bot is cheating, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, there could be inaccurate information. Uh, it covers a lot of uh, knowledge, and for those of you who may know certain topics better than I do, I apologize in advance. Right, so uh, I'm gonna start off with a short story. Back in 2012, when the game Diablo 3 first came out, uh, everybody was trying to go for, well, gold, in-game resource, was pretty valuable at the time. And uh, everybody was trying to acquire it, and so using uh, Auto-It, which is both a programming language as well as an interpreter for Windows, I wrote this mini bot or a script that had my character stand still. Uh, you cannot really, <laughs> it's hard to see on the screen, but basically the character would farm gold by randomly slashing around him uh, at uh, in, in a very specific area of the game that had an enemy, a pillar that would infinitely gener generate enemies infinitely. So he would just slash all around and then once he slayed all the monsters, there would be just gold lying around. And how exactly do you like acquire the gold? Well, a clever way is just have your character jump in place and he picks up all the gold and land. Okay, so now this program's running. I went out, grabbed food with my friends, came back expecting, you know, some lot of gold. And I find the character just like jumping off in like the edge of the map. And like basically just what happened was uh, what happened was the program, every single time he jumped, he would just displace a little from his landing position, going off into infinity. And so what went wrong? And how can we do better? Well, it's a problem of input and output. Input meaning the program does not have any knowledge of the state of the game. And to a lesser extent, output, which is the game, or the program does not accurately, you know, issue these commands and certain side effects happen, right? And the displacement was one of the side effects. Um, so before, uh, so we're gonna tackle input and output, but before I do that, I need to introduce two topics of computing. Uh, the first one is the process, and I know many of you probably heard this term, but may not have like, like realized the formal definition. A process is a program in execution. In other words, it's the instructions of the program with the variables and uh, variables live running uh, in memory, right? And this is the anatomy of the process. Text refers to instructions, data refers to initialized uh, or uninitialized identified data that the program uses. The heap is dynamically allocated uh, data that uh, the program will use during runtime, right? Which is different from identified uh, data and the stack, which you probably heard of, you get stack overflow. This is how the pro operating system keeps track of the return addresses for functions called and their arguments, right? The other, uh, so what is the difference between a process and a thread? Each process can have multiple threads that share common data as well as text file, uh, te instructions in a process, right? Multiple threads in one process. 